Data log of Celian first contact, 2667, Star Runner 4311, Pilot J. Kurt. J. looked out into a brightly colored tunnel that swirled purples, blues, and white as they zipped by toward their destination. With a half-eaten burrito in hand and his legs propped up on his dash, he called for his one other crew member. Hey, how much longer to Demma, Cam? An audible sigh could be heard from a station behind his pilot's seat. If you just look at your displays, you would know. I know, he paused, taking another bite of his station burrito. But I'm eating, Jay said with a smirk. Just under an hour, Cam said, returning to his station. He manipulated a series of functions on his display, and the audible sounds of redirecting power could be heard. What you doing? Jay asked. Just rerouting power to generate the shields before we exit our jump. I swore we were maxed, said Jay. What's our signature output at? I would not be surprised if there were pirates this far out. Cam scanned his monitor and gave a short reply. IR is dancing around 1 to 1 1.5 thousand. EM is around 2.6 thousand. I'll lower power output once we exit our jump. Good to know, Cam. I could always count on you, Jay said before returning to his remaining burrito. Several minutes passed, and the crew was reaching the end of their jump. Like a fish out of water, the crew was met with the silent void and only the drum of their engine to keep them company. Shields are full, lowering power output to a minimum. Hey, Cam said with a hint of worry in his voice. Are you reading this? He said, directing Jay to a monitor on his dash. No, it's just showing up for me. Jay maneuvered his fingers and brought the signal online. Check the status of Dima 4 and 5. I'm not picking up their waypoints on my HUD. As he said, the signal came through as an urgent plea for help. If anyone can hear this, please, send the fleet, the guard, I don't care who. Just come. It played before the signal was cut off and began to loop. What the hell? Jay muttered before his attention was brought back by Cam. Got a signal from a lone commercial satellite. Long-range capabilities are shot, so it's only transmitting in the system. Delta Band. Delta Band? He thought. Cam, check the other commercial bands. He shook his head. Just noise. Then a sudden realization came upon Cam and suddenly began furiously tapping away at his station. After a few moments and calls from Jay that went ignored, Cam spoke. It ain't pirates, and motioned for his findings onto a free monitor in front of Jay. It was a series of still images from the lone satellite. Several large ships were followed by a series of smaller ones. Jay noted three large ships he thought to be a carrier of sorts, due to the amount of much smaller ones, the size of a typical fighter, who were entering and leaving. Surrounding them looked to be a series of cruisers, frigates, and corvettes, with the smaller version boasting a large presence. It's an entire invasion force. But from what? Cam said, scanning the material once more and adding notes. Switching to optical lenses, increase power output, Jay ordered. I doubt that's a good idea, Cam rebuked. Jay sighed. Just do it, Cam. With a motion of his finger, he slid the indicator for power output beyond the minimum. And with that came brighter lights, electronics, and their signature. Just a moment, Jay said in a focused trance. And got it. Sending you the data now. It was another series of videos and images from the satellite that detailed images on the surface, as well as high-definition shots of the invading forces. Jesus, they're taking slaves, Cam blurted. We have to notify the fleet. The ship can't send that amount of data. It'll only get corrupted and the station here is nothing but dust. Jay paused. We're gonna have to head back to the Draxis system and at least issue a read-only transmission. Fine, I'll prep a statement, Cam said right before alarms began blaring in the compartment. What the hell? We got contacts. Three, Jay reported urgently. Shots of red plasma flew by his ship, and the shields flickered from the impact before settling. Jay swung the ship in an erratic U-turn and ordered max output and max thrust. What about shields? Cam hollered. We're fine. Focus shields to the rear until we jump. The alarm still blared, and a red light flashed intermittently in the singular cabin while Jay did his best to outmaneuver his enemy's shots. He cycled the targeting system through each enemy, but did so intending to gather as much information as possible. His ship was defenseless. No missiles, no guns, only thrust. Nearing the edge of the system, the ship rocked, and Cam reported that their shield was depleted and long-range communications were shot. 
I was able to send a message to Stellar Command, but I don't know if it'll reach them in time. Not without a slipspace laser array. How long before it reaches then? Jay probed. Seven days. Despair engulfed the cabin. The rattling of the ship and red light were the only constant in their escape. Well, good news. We got distance, preparing to jump into slipspace. Cam refastened his harness and began transferring all data onto a single drive, out of the many they already possessed. Just so you know, I scrubbed all the data from the ship and put it on a drive. Good. Get ready. I'm making the jump. Cam nodded, even though Jay couldn't see him, and executed the slipspace sequence. A dark purple, blue, and white circle appeared in front of them, almost seemingly out of nowhere. It was just large enough for the ship to enter. Jay looked at his radar and every other sensor he had, and found the interceptors too far to engage with normal fire, but an alarm indicating a lock blared. You have got to be kidding me, Jay yelled. A symbol of fire appeared on his screen with a countdown that descended rapidly. He waited until the countdown reached three before he launched countermeasures. A series of rapid pops were felt from the ship, and when the countdown hit zero, an explosion rocked the starboard side of the ship. Seeing that they weren't dead, and the flares worked, he accelerated into the sphere. As soon as they passed, their opening closed behind them. They had survived. Hey! A large, frustrated sigh erupted from Jay. What the hell, man? Another sigh was heard from Cam, just not as loud. Did you analyze their ships? Jay asked. Not yet. They're heavy on the fighter front, and I don't even want to know what kind of weapons those ships have. He slid into his chair. Silence regained hold of the cabin once more, and the light of slipspace filtered through the cockpit. How long until Draxus? Silently tapping on the monitor, Cam responded. About eight hours. All right, I'll take my nap first. Wake me up in four. Jay pressed a button and his seat moved back on a rail before swiveling 180 degrees from the cockpit. Cam's station faced the bulkhead to his right, and their bunks were just the opposite of that. The rack that held their data drives was placed next to his station. The restroom was situated opposite next to the bunks and was sealed. Beyond that were solely maintenance doors that had access to easily replaceable components. Jay took some time to siphon through them before setting on one designated for communications. We don't happen to have an extra size one comms package, do we? Jay asked. Nope, just rations. Jay sighed and yanked the smoky component from its slot and set it down. He figured that damage from the plasma shot fried the circuits as they sent out their final message to Saul. In any case, long-range communication was out of the question until they could get a replacement part. Jay retired for now to his bottom bunk and dozed off. The hum of the ship and the tapping away of fingers on keys. Incoming transmission. Dima system inquiry, urgent. To Draxis system, Mantis station. From Star Runner 4311, Cam Farron. Dima system is compromised by an unknown entity. Requesting Republic Stellar Command Liaison. Request is urgent and high value. ETA, 7.5 hours. End transmission. Error. Error. Did not send. Loop. Yes. No.